Yeah, now I can at least temporarily laugh at it, but uh, I'm going from um, laughter and happiness when I read the international news and how the chess community and the world is reacting every second. There's like good news for Ukraine. And then on the other hand, I, I read the news like every like half an hour uh, and then they are bombing Kharkiv and Kiev. And how do you wrap your head around that at the same time? It's crazy. I'm going from from uh, uh, from total agony to total happiness in a second. Like, uh, but uh, not long story short, right? So. <laughs> I no. guess I should t tell the whole story, right? Well, okay. you're, um, you guys are in Poland now, is that right? Yes, me and my uh, family are in Poland and uh, we crossed the borders through Slovakia because uh, uh, Yefimenko Zahar, from, who's from uh, Mukacho, he's close to the border. He suggested that that's the, that would be least number of cars because I have three children, so it's really hard to travel without uh, uh, car and uh, and stuff. And uh, so we went to Slovakian border. And uh, no, uh, first of all, Wednesday, normal day, nothing's happening, uh, plans for the future, everything's normal, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. on Thursday, uh, the rockets fired at Kiev, and we wake up in horror, um, what is going on and uh, well in retrospect now i think that was that day we, sh we should have um i should have taken my family to safety but i live in lviv which is western ukraine which is like i know 70 kilometers okay 50 miles from uh, <laughs> from, uh, from <laughs> i should say to the american mess very gracious um, of you thank you <laughs> Uh, I'm not good at foreign guides, so I'm going to use Celsius. Uh, so you'll have to help me here. I'll, go, I'll Google it for me uh, if I had to use the temperature. Uh, 50, kilo, 50 miles from Polish border. So it's like furthest possible point from from the, the attack on, on the capital, on the east, from the south. And uh, uh, so I was not ready to just take off that, uh, that same day. And... Uh, um, some of my friends went to and took uh, arms uh, to to um, to defend my country. I asked that question myself to myself, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I was not ready to do so. Uh, number one priority for me was my uh, family safety, and my family is uh, pretty big. Uh, well, I have wife, three children, and uh, my sister with two uh, two young children. Her husband uh, stayed. In, in Lviv and joined the army and and he asked me that uh, I help my sister his wife and his children to to be safe so I took that responsibility I have my mom and uh, grand uh, and stepfather and um, who's American and my grandfather who's 86 and uh, so uh, and I'm the only one who know how to uh, uh, how to do the, the borders and uh, what to do. But basically, you need one young man in such uh, in such uh, big family. Uh, so uh, and also, I will not uh, I will not lie that I was uh, I decided to do so. No, I was also terrified to to go war because I have zero experience whatsoever. And uh, I'm also. Uh, by the way, is the connection good? Because uh, if uh, no, I, I hear you fine. I yeah. Can... Excellent. Okay. Uh, I was also terrified. I'm not going to lie that I did. I'm not afraid. Um, uh, but I'm also terrified of uh, killing someone, even even those who fully deserve that. So uh, so we decided on on Thursday. We were talking that. Uh, I said I'm not ready yet, I d and nobody was ready. <laughs> Who would be ready? Uh, just to drop everything and leave for indefinite, unclear amount of time uh, to uh, to a foreign country. And uh, and then I was like, something else, I guess, has to happen so that I'm ready. And then it kept happening like every hour, every couple of hours. And on Friday, we uh, uh, in the morning we had to wake up at 6 a.m. Even though it was Lviv, Lviv is totally fine. No rocket has landed, at least so far, which is quite suspicious, I think, uh, because it's been landing all over Ukraine. Um, 
mm, and there was a siren and it means you have to go to the basement and drop everything and go to the basement. We actually packed some uh, necessary stuff for a couple of hours or like a half a day stay in the basement. And so we went to the basement and we sat there for like an hour and uh, and then we went back home and then uh, then I realized that it's going to keep happening. And even if even if that's the, the worst that will happen, it's still unbearable to 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 be there. And um, and then so we decided we had a talk. We decided that, yes, we have to we have to go sit in a car and drive uh, to the border. And my grandfather, who's 86, he he's living alone in a city 120 kilometers from my city. And our agreement was that we will pick him up. Map. He lived there his whole life. He's not ready to, he doesn't want to move. He's been, uh, when he was a child, he um, had to leave um, in Poland, Ukrainians living in Poland in um, 1940s uh, were forcefully moved to um, to Soviet Union. And, um, but they were not forcefully moved. They, uh, his father understood that they they need to leave, otherwise they would take everything and they would still leave. So they collected all their possessions. They left land and a house and then went uh, east to, to Ukraine. And it was a couple of months and he was nine. So he had to leave his house for forever, basically once. And of course, it's a traumatic ex experience for a young boy. Anyway, so he's 86 and he doesn't want to leave the city unless abs absolutely necessary. So we had to drive 120 kilometers, my mom, to take him so that we can fit 11 people in two cars and uh, pack whatever we can. And uh, then I called uh, Zahari Efimenko, which... Uh, border crossing point. Of course, there are no flights. Uh, it's been closed uh, instantly. Um, uh, so the only option is by car or by bus or, or walk up like uh, you walk through the border. But if you walk, you have zero possessions. If you go by bus, you have some possessions. But if you uh, if you drive by car, you can have at least a bare minimum. So we decided to take a car and so we went to to the border of Slovakia and it was funny, uh, we were not the only one who decided to do so. The whole Ukraine is basically running away. If you look at the map, on the south, there's Crimea, which is illegally owned by Russia. Uh, uh, and the sea is controlled. Uh, on the uh, um, uh, right part, on the uh, eastern part, there's Russia. On the um, north, it's Belarus, whose total... Uh, ally is a strong word. It's like a subordinate, I would say, of Russia. And so we uh, have only the Western border with Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, and uh, Romania. And yeah, I think that's it, Moldova. How long did and it, did it so take to Poland. get to uh, Poland? Um, uh, well, we went to Slovakia because everybody's going to Poland and we figured that a small crossing point in Slovakia would be easier. And that was, uh, I'm extremely grateful to Yefimenko for oh, I, I think see. he stayed his in his city for suggesting that and so we, we drove there and we were going to use the the first we wanted to go to Ushgorod, which is like the southwestern point very close to uh, literally on the border with hungary and slovakia and uh, to go there and like uh, have some rest and, and then go and then when we were driving driving on the highway to Ushgorod, uh 100 kilometers before Ushgorod, 100, and it's a highway. So imagine a highway, and there's traffic jam on the highway. Mm -hmm. 100 kilometers before the city, who is uh, which is on the border. What? Not traffic. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, lost. You're yeah, okay. Sorry, traffic it was jam. too quiet. I saw that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 100 kilometers. Not traffic. There's literally a car in front of you and then another car in front of it. And they are barely moving, just like walking. So I calculate the approximate speed. We're just basically walking to Ushgorod. And it's not the border yet. It's just the city next to the border. And I was terrified because, like, what are we going to do? We have uh, five children in, in two cars. We have uh, on 
old old man with like what do we do and then and then if <laughs> because i assumed that we can have a stop in Ushgol, and it's just continue uh, when it hit me that we, and everybody's sleeping it's late at night mm -hmm. and so then i figured that we don't need to go to Ushgol, we immediately go to the the crossing point so we turned the car and uh, went uh, the opposite direction went around a little bit and uh, and uh, went to that uh, uh, border which was a little to the north of Ushgoro. And uh, when we were about uh, like 50 kilometers before that border, same story as with Ushgoro. Just the car standing there and on the highway and you just stop behind it. And then somebody stops behind you and so on and so on. And I'm like, and we were moving like walking and uh, I was panicking because I took responsibility for like 10 people. And uh, now we're here stuck in the middle of the night uh, kids are crying. Grandpa is having a very hard time because he needs to go to the bathroom. He needs to sleep. He can sleep and so on and so on. <laughs> and we were standing in that line, barely moving for, I don't remember how many hours, three, four at night. And then at some point, I think I went outside. I asked my wife to take the wheel and I went forward. And I realized that was, a, I'm not sure how to, to call it. We call it block post. Mm -hmm. like like if you have like bricks uh that's so that uh, vehicles cannot cross and armed uh, ukrainian forces just checking every vehicle and that was the delay so i asked them uh, what's behind that block and yeah then you drive to the border and i'm like so that's the delay so on the um on every region there's this uh, checking every car so that uh, we have unfortunately uh, like yeah so checking every car, checking all the documents, even though it's not the border. So then we crossed that and then we drove 50 miles, uh, you know, 30 miles to the border. There was a gas station. So we were quite happy. Oh, that's it. We we're very close. So we uh, put gas in our cars, had some coffee, and then we drove the border. And uh, same story is there. Uh, the border is two and a half kilometers. Like if you use Google Maps or Waze, mm -hmm. it says 2.5 kilometers which is what one a little less than two miles 1.8 mm -hmm. miles mm -hmm. and there's a, a car in front of you and then you stop there and there's a car in front of it in front of it and so on until the border and i'm like okay and that's it that's what we did we were standing there moving uh, the approximate speed was five to ten cars in an hour they were moving so it means that one car in front of the line has passed the border. Uh, so it would take, what, five to 10 hour per cars per hour. And there were a few hundred cars in front of us. I don't remember the numbers, 300, 350. Uh, basically, we were just living in our cars for a day and a, like day, night, and another day, and um, moving every 10 minutes, one car on average. Sometimes it's an hour, nothing, and then you move like, I don't know, a hundred feet or so at the best. Uh, and that's it. And you wait and then somebody, uh, but people could mm, walk through the border and that was no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can go by car to the edge or to the border and then you walk through the border, but you leave your car and belongings behind. And the reason why such big delay for cars was because the, the police on the border is who would you rather rather pass the whole car which you have to check the luggage checks the documents checks the insurance uh, check everything or in the same time like 50 people that are walking and there are women with small children no men could uh, could get out of the country uh, uh, until they clarified that if you have three uh, um, three small children uh, then uh, and you have all the documents that they may let you cross the border so until the last moment i was not 100 percent sure whether i don't leave everybody uh, behind uh, and just go back and um, so i had my documents i went to to the, the police on the border uh, border control asked them hey, these are my documents uh, i'm transparent about it i'm not trying to to do a business and uh, so they check yes you're fine you're gonna be fine that's so that's okay 
because a lot of men would just drive their wife and children to the border. They would walk through the border and then they would take a car and go back and uh, defend the country. And uh, uh, so we were crossing the border like really, really long time. And, uh, and there were a lot of people on the border, small children, moms with, with uh, infants. Uh, when ah, the men cannot cross the border because, well, because we have a war. And the moment the president declared that, uh, uh, there were families on the borders that were crossing. And, uh, and suddenly uh, it says, he has that man that just passed, he's fine. From this second, no man can cross. So the families were there waiting in cars for God knows how long. And uh, I can only imagine what they were going through anyways. Uh, but uh, on the bright side, um, uh, there was uh, next to the border, people were standing at night, it's cold. So there's uh, volunteers, some fire, some snacks, some drinks. Um, uh, the other uh, on the Slovakian part, there are uh, volunteers who, who give you food, help you uh, find a place, uh, take you with a bus to schools, to uh, uh, the, like the government, uh, you know, the, the Polish government said, they asked, I think their prime minister, uh, how many uh, uh, refugees are you ready to to accept like you know with the syrian crisis for example there were like quotas mm -hmm. as far as i understand in europe this country says yeah i'm ready to take this number like this uh, three thousand five thousand and so on and so on and um, poland who's our really good friend like countrywide uh, that said uh, there's no number we'll accept everyone who needs uh, help everyone mm -hmm. And um, so the, the Slovakians, and so they, they help people find a place to, to stay, have food and have uh, um, uh, on government level. Uh, but there's always whatever, like with our Ukrainian army, the government does its best. We still have thousands of volunteers, hundreds of thousands of people donating uh, because there's never uh, too much, too much help to, to, those, uh, to those who need it. And uh, yeah, and then I cannot call it a happy ending, but uh, it's very hard to be happy in this state of mind and uh, when your country is under fire. Um, uh, when we are very close to crossing the border, uh, well, um, I need to book a place, right? So, so I need to, where are we going? Uh, we, uh, we are not... Uh, for refugees, we we are as I think the right term about it is uh, we're not economic refugees. We're, so we we don't need uh, we don't need a uh, play. We can we can pay for our for our expenses. Just just let us cross the border, right? Mm -hmm. So there are people who are who need who need that help. Mm -hmm. We don't need it. So so I needed to book a place. So how do you book a place? You go to Booking.com. Ah, we huh. actually wanted to stay in Uzgorod at the night because it was we arrived to Uzgorod at like midnight or something, and everybody is exhausted, young children. We want to stay the night, and then we are looking for a place. Like no, there's no place literally. Everything is booked is, unless you like drive through the village and go to a house and ask somebody. Um, booking is not working in Ukraine, and but there are local websites. You call all the numbers. No free beds. No free beds. Maybe I have one bunk bed. Everything is booked on Western uh, border, and uh, so we decided to uh, to cross the border uh, through the night. And it turned out it's, uh, it took two nights to cross the border. So when we were reached the, the border, I went to charge my phone to the uh, to the gas station, and there's Wi-Fi. And I uh, you go to booking right, and there's you click your location right, find a place near to your location. And the closest locations in Slovakia were booked, uh, fully booked. And but there was one in Poland, uh, which is uh, was and very high rated, uh, good good to use the reasonable price and so on and so on. And so I put eleven people, you know, on booking. You go, you put um, how many adults, how many children, what age. Usually you cannot find like for eleven people, <laughs> but, like there was no chance. And it gave me no. <laughs> so that how can you fit that like? Uh, and uh, and they tell me yeah there's a place there's a house here there are this is the room this is it this is it so i click book uh, it turned out it was not so the booking set it was let's say 20 miles away 
which is great, right? You drive a little bit and you're there. Turns out it was 80, 90 mm. miles mm. because it's it's literally 20 mile distance. Like if you fly, <laughs> but if you drive, there's no road. <laughs> you have to go around. So 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 we were here and we needed to go north and the route went like this. We went up north and back. So it was that was so there were uh, closer places, but but I'm really happy that we found this one because uh, um, uh, they, they took us in. They gave us extra room for free. They didn't want to charge us money. They said that you can stay for as long as you need. Uh, they say we we don't need the money. We we have like uh, mm, so it took us a really long negotiation to to say to them that there are other people who need help like that. We can we can pay uh, we can pay the price. And so they took us as family, this uh, Polish uh, Polish uh, uh, family and uh, and. Um, it's really great to feel this unity of the whole world. And so they are Polish uh, family that owns a, a house in Carpathians. Carpathians are Ukrainian mountains. Okay, not Ukraine, they're in there. But uh, when I say Carpathians, this is Ukraine. We go to, to, to the mountains to ski, to have to enjoy vacation. And we're just on the Polish border of the same mountains. That Ukraine is like, I don't know, 50 kilometers away by, by, this, by, by direct line. Hmm. And... Uh, Mm. They took us as family, and uh, uh, even though they don't speak English and I don't speak Polish, my wife somewhat speaks Polish, but the way we communicate is they speak Polish, and I understand it because uh, Lviv, my city, was um, was part of Poland for for quite a substantial amount of time. They mm. call our city, uh, they love our city, we have great architecture. We have great history, and they they love to come and visit and have our coffee and so on. And they call it because our city is Lviv, but in Polish it's Lvov. But you know, like if you if you love somebody, you can have like pet names, like soften you know, you soften the name in it a mm. little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's Lvov, but Lvovek Lvovek is like when you when you call a small child. I do. I'm not sure if that's in English. How do you call? Uh, uh, a softer name for a kid, like there's a strong name. I cannot think uh, of, of an example. Costa, uh, 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 for example, your name. Kostantin yeah. <laughs> is the full name. In my, uh -huh. right, that's a full name. That's a that's a big adult with mustache. Right? <laughs> but Costa is uh, is like a softer, a little softer name. Right. Uh, so so they, they call our city Lvovek, Lvovek, like our like they they love it. Uh -huh. Nash Lvovek. And so, so, so there's lots of Polish culture and, and language in my city. So I understand Polish language and they understand, I just speak Ukrainian and they speak Polish. That's how we communicate. And there's like, there's no borders, nothing. It's, uh, um, so they took us in as, as family and, um, we're going to stay here for, for a while and updating the news every half an hour. And it's really hard to even go to sleep. I, I go to sleep every time. Uh, terrified just now I'm going to say um, yeah something new happened the our our forces um, according to the the uh, there was an assignment to kill our president uh, but to the Chechen president Kadyrov and he sent his troops to just uh, remove our president Zelensky and apparently now now they, they caught uh, they, they caught them and uh, it's like every every half an hour, there's like something putting bomb, something there. Uh, our forces rem uh, killed a few tanks and here, and it's like I could not imagine. I, I always thought it's the books, history, Second World War, and so on and so on. It's yeah, we'll never see it again. It's all history. I remember, I remember very clearly when I was, I don't know. Uh, 17, 18, you're supposed to be drafted to the army. We don't have a professional army yet. Uh, but uh, so you, you have to, if you finish school, you go to the army unless you, f uh, you go to university. And I went to university and then I went to, to do my PhD thesis. So I never served in the army. First, I was a child. Then I went to university. Students don't go. And then if you continue study, uh, continue the scientific uh, study, then you also are not drafted. And then I turned 25, and back then it was uh, uh, if you turn 25, they don't uh, they don't draft you anymore. And uh, I turned 25, and the draft is like 
a few weeks after my birthday. <laughs> so it was like uh, I never went to the army. And I, I remember this very clearly. Uh, I was like, why do we even need army? I was like, and it was such a childish uh, infantile approach to the worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, wouldn't we live all happier and wealthier if nobody had an army? You know, those people that are in the army, they are not producing any value, right? They are not doing goods. They are not doing, they're just preparing to kill someone. Imagine if all of them worked and created goods for others. We would be wealthier and happier world. And, uh, but if there's one who has an army, you have to have an army too. And then if they like everybody has to have an army because there could be some ass. Uh, can I can I swear? You can say whatever you want. Okay. Well, what's the policy? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're you're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. It takes one asshole with an army so that the whole world has to have weapons, more weapons, and then a little bit more weapons. But I remember this very clearly. Oh, army is stupid, and why do we need? I didn't say stupid, but I was like, wouldn't it be better if we lived in peace and so on and so on? And then I, I remember this. Okay, okay, we need army to defend ourselves. Uh, and, and I was like, oh, well, who's going to attack us? Russia? That was, and it was a sincere uh, uh, counterexample in my mind. That was like Russia? No, that was my, that was my world. It was like so unthinkable that that was my argument. And like, who, Russia? Like, no, nobody would attack us. That was my, uh, my view. It was not the view of our president. So, um, uh, so here we are. Yeah. Have you, um, are you in touch with any the... other, uh, other chess players, uh, from Ukraine? I know that Yefimenko, uh, at least when I called him a couple of days ago, he stayed there. I know uh, that, uh, Elianov, um, went from Kharkiv to Lviv mm -hmm. and stays there because it's the furthest point you can go to. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do I know? I know Gravinsky, a uh, coach who's, uh, um, he's going to learn how to shoot and uh, his wife and kids are in Poland. And so, so if anyone's listening from Ukraine, uh, I think the, the, the fastest way is to cross the border by, by walking. There are buses. Okay, the fastest means 24 hours. That, that's approximately the number. If you take a car now, it can take a week. It is just unbelievable. So my uh, on Polish border, I was telling you crossing the border at the main uh, Polish border uh, stations. It was the the length of a car was thirty kilometers, which is twenty miles. Twenty mile long car in front of a car, in front of a car, in front of a car. What is the length of a car? I don't know. 10 feet, 15 mm -hmm. feet. You can imagine the number, like it takes weeks. You live in your car basically, and you, you find food, there's no bathroom, there's no shower. It's um, it's awful what people are going through. And I'm not talking about all the people dying uh, horrible deaths. This is so, so if anyone wants to cross the border, I think it's uh, take a bus, take, take like a few necessary things, take a bus and walk through the border. And there's lots of volunteers and organizations and governments helping on the other, uh, on the Western part of Ukraine, ready to, to give food and accommodation and, um, and help. But, but then again, <laughs> it's still, it's never enough. It's never enough. It's, there are still, um, yeah. What did you ask me? I forgot your question. I, I've been uh, sleeping for four or <laughs> five hours for five days now and exhausted. So sorry if I'm. No, no, you, you answered that. I just, minutes. yeah, I was wondering about other, other chess players you might, you might be in touch with. Um, but mm. I, I think you mentioned, yeah, Fomenko, Liana. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, like, like you were saying, like, it's just like unimaginable that this could have happened today, but. Yeah, I guess we were all ah, just kind I of remember. naive. Yeah. But, you know, Kasparov was saying it all along, all the time. Right. All the time he was saying that Putin is crazy. He would, uh, he attacked Ukraine first time in 2014. Maybe people forgot about that. To Crimea, attacked East Donetsk, Luhansk, took over there, put the puppet, um, president, whatever the name is, um, shot the 
we even forgot already the the Malaysian airplane mm -hmm. MH17 in 2014. Just the the rocket flew and shoot the the plane with 298 people in it from the Russian controlled territory, from a Russian owned book uh, which is a device to shoot to shoot the planes. Nothing. So I was asking these questions myself in my mind and to to my European American friends. What else he should do so that you start acting? He attacked Ukraine. He killed. We already have I think 14,000 people that and before this Thursday. Uh, he shot the innocent plane. He uh, poisoned uh, the uh, his his political opponents mm -hmm. in the middle of Europe. Um, where was it? I forgot. In London, it was long time ago. The yeah. Litvinenko uh, agent, and uh, it was what in Germany. I, I forgot where he poisoned uh, uh, Navalny. His, uh, and then he imprisoned him. Like uh, he's doing whatever he wants. Nobody's really now finally. The whole world is reacting uh, proportionally to uh, to his awful actions, and then again, we're you know we're always smart. And when we look back, we're like, oh, of course, you should have done that. Like once we know all the facts, how the things unfolded, uh, you think, yeah, oh, of course, that that was the way it would go. But it was not obvious back then. Do you know, Costa? What you know? What is the whole world? USA, all Europe, including Ukraine. What do you do? What is the two words they used uh, about World War Two, when this eighth uh, of uh, May, 9th of May, do they say uh, never again? Never again, yeah. Mm -hmm. Never again. Do you know what Russians have been saying all these years? No, actually. We can do it again. We can do it again. We can do it again. So the the lesson was, and here they are, doing it again in some sense. So they were saying that we won. Uh, they were not saying about the sufferings of millions of people. We won. We did everything right. Even though Stalin killed tens of thousands, tens of millions of people. We did everything right. We won. We can do it again. So they never had any remorse. Never had any, uh, because the winner has no remorse. Like, why would you? I did everything right if I won. And here we are again. And then, you know, Putin is the... Uh, Think that Stalin was was a good guy. That mm -hmm. uh, he's the winner. Uh, there was in Soviet Union that was de-Stalinification. I'm not sure if that's a proper translation. Mm -hmm. When Stalin uh, uh, died in 1953, March something, I don't remember. Sometime after that, the uh, the new government, or it was not government, it was the, the communist. Party leaders, they uh, they did de Stalinization of the country. They removed all the statues. They said he was horrible. He did uh, genocide Ukrainians. He killed millions of innocent people, and so on and so on. They did that, right? Like Germany did with Hitler. They said awful, terrible things. We are. They're still sorry till this day, right? They still pay uh, reparations and everything. So they learned their lesson, and they are now fantastic, peaceful, even too peaceful country. They're. They were not until the last moment. They were not ready to, to help uh, Ukraine to its best abilities. So they learned their lesson, and so my hope is that when when Putin dies, that Russia would have the, the Putinification of the country. They would. They would realize that what horrible things he has been doing and how he was lying to them all these, all these years, about us being the enemy, and yeah. him being the liberating us from us i uh, I, I hope so too um yeah Mikhail, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time i know you're exhausted and, and so on um I'm, if... I'm already not exhausted i had i had a good <laughs> night's sleep so i would like to talk a little bit more uh, well, unless oh, yeah. you have a next guest please. well uh, um, unless you have... we have about 10 minutes um sorry our, our schedule is a bit busy but actually I would, I would love to put you in touch with um ben feingold because he's doing all kinds of streams for for ukraine now mm -hmm. and and maybe we can get you on his stream as well to to talk to his fans because sure. he has even bigger reach uh, i mean much bigger than than we do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i would love to do that because uh we are uh, there are people who are fighting there are people who are serving the fighters we uh, this would be my uh my small uh, what they say, nail into Putin's coffin. In some sense, this is the way I can contribute to 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 Ukraine's victory. 
Yeah, that would be wonderful. Um, yes, I, w I, I would love to do that. I'll, I'll yeah. put you in touch right after we're, uh, we're done. I, I mean, yeah, we're just trying to do, uh, you know, as much as we can over here. It's, uh, yeah, just absolutely crazy what's been going on. Um, and yeah, very hard to live like normal life mm -hmm. while all this is happening. I mean, it's, not, it's nothing compared to Ukraine or even in Russia. I feel like they're suffering too. All the people that are, are not interested in the war, like are against mm -hmm. the war, they're mm -hmm. also being punished by by Putin. Um, oh, uh, I really hope I really hope Russians wake up because I think the only way he can stop being president and stop all this uh, misery is when uh, there's also resistance from from inside russia so lots of russians uh don't think it's uh, they believe the propaganda the propaganda that putin has done with with the media is unbelievably powerful uh, you know my my sister's co-worker who's um, 40 something years old a uh, man patriotic ukrainian man who lives in lviv it was before all of this it was after 2014 when when uh, russia annexed crimea and and donetsk and luhansk um he decided to watch the russian uh, state-owned tv channel for 20 minutes he knew it was full propaganda all lies he was 100 percent aware of it and he's living in lviv reading uh, all the news and everything he's uh, mm, not the guy that can can fall for the tricks and uh, so he watched it for like 20 minutes and there was a the TV station was doing a report about Lviv, about his city, and how horrible it is to hear, how we are like basically killing Russians on the street, apparently. Uh, even though there's uh, like, we are a touristic place, Lviv, uh, the, the, if you're going to Ukraine for, for vacation, hopefully, in the future, Lviv is the place to go to. We have architecture, we have art, we have, we have great food and good prices and hotels and everything. So, uh, but, but the problem is that we speak Ukrainian. Most of uh, Ukrainian people speak Russian, unfortunately. Uh, they understand Ukrainian, but uh, they're still Russian speaking. That's why Putin thinks that's, that's, his, that's his, that's his property, Ukraine, because uh, a lot of people are speaking Russian. And, but in Lviv, we speak Ukrainian. Oh my God. And there are less uh, Russian speaking people in, in Lviv. Although if you walk in the main, uh, in the main um, square, there's there's Russian tourists or maybe from Eastern Ukraine tourists all the time. So here, the, that uh, journalist uh, was uh, was giving all this information about how how fascist and evil and stuff is going on in, in Lviv, uh, because you need an, an external uh, enemy, right, to unite your uh, your people so that they don't see that uh, they don't have like I don't know how many people in Russia don't have gas even though Russia sells gas to all the Europe. Uh, there are people who have no gas at their home. Millions of people in Russia have no gas at their home. And that's okay because they have their Putin who is defending them from imaginary uh, enemy out there. And so, so you have to create an external enemy to unite your people so that they don't uh, listen to, don't see what, what horrible uh, things are happening inside their country. And so uh, Lviv was one of the enemies. And so he watched for 20 minutes that uh, station. So he turned it off and and then he was like, huh, maybe I missed, uh, maybe it was in news, maybe I missed something. Maybe there was something like this happening, but they were just saying because they were so convincing. And so on. he started having doubts in 20 minutes watching that propaganda. 20 minutes he was having doubts about all his life and all, all he knows about the city and all the news that is happening. What happens if you watch it for an hour every day and you don't have alternative? There's like almost no chance. So there are tens of millions of Russian people, uh, their brains are filled with propaganda. And even if you present the fact, they doesn't, uh, doesn't coincide with their worldview. They reject the fact instead of changing what they believe in, right? If a fact yeah. contradicts your uh your view change your view right or adjust your view to the fact not say no dismiss the fact mm -hmm. right because you shouldn't identify yourself with with your uh ideology or worldview because you should like it could be there's there could be new information and oh i was wrong about that interesting so there are a lot of russian people who think that uh, yes they are 
um, denazification, demilitarization, whatever you call this this uh, war, uh, that Ukrainians need help. Just um, I would encourage uh, all the viewers to to talk to your Russian friends, whatever Russian friend you have, try to talk talk uh, talking to them. The only way this can stop is either the Putin gets killed for whatever reason or dies. Uh, it's if there's uh, people uh, protesting inside Russia, he will not have enough police uh, to uh, to stop if millions of people go on the street. That's what we proved in our 2014 revolution. We had at one point one million people in the main square of Kyiv protesting our. A previous president who was corrupt and cheated uh, on the elections and so on and so on mm -hmm. so uh, the the least you can do i uh, think what russian uh, yes uh, give uh, um, donate to ukrainian uh, refugees so that they desperately need that help but without money it actually could be even uh, equally good i would say talk to a russian uh, friend or a colleague or acquaintance that you have and uh, what's their, uh, what, what do they think? What do they know? What facts do they know? What protestations they are listening to? The more people realize what is happening in Russia, the faster this would end, uh, um, this misery would end. Because the, the soldiers that are going, that are kept, uh, they, they, they get captured. Uh, do you know what they say, Kostya? They were told that uh, it's a study. They are going to train. Yeah. And then there's a... The commander says, now we cross the border to Ukraine. And they're like, why? And it's in the middle of the night almost uh, because NATO is expanding. They are threatening our nation. We have to liberate Ukrainians from, from USA, NATO, whatever. And that's, uh, that's a direct order. And if you disobey a direct order during wartime, uh, we're just going to shoot you. And they just obey the order. They go forward, go inside Ukraine, get killed, get captured and really thinking that they are to liberate us they are thinking that people are waiting for them to liberate them from our nazi president they, they are saying that there are nazis in ukraine our president is russian speaking jew for god's sakes russian speaking jew and they are saying that have to, they have to say to the russian speaking people our president is russian speaking he studied ukrainian because he's a ukrainian president now He's a Russian speaking Jew and they say he's a Nazi and he uh, Russians need help from from against that president. It's, and they say that and then they re, uh, once they realize uh, what horrible scene, they are just crying there because uh, because their brain they are washed with uh, with propaganda and um, it's horrible. It's horrible. OK, I'm not going to cry now. It's, no, it's, I, 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 would, I would totally understand. Yeah, I mean, it, it's absolutely awful. Um, well, I'll remind folks, you know, we're, this is what we're raising money for uh, today. The money is going directly mm -hmm. to folks in Ukraine that need food, medicine, aid, whatever they need, more or less. Um, uh, we, we've already raised actually over, uh, uh, I think, 11,000 total, uh, which is which is amazing oh from a small little community. It's amazing. That's that's just amazing. I, I thank you so much. It's it's unbelievable how the whole world is is united. But there are there would be uh, an estimate was there would be seven million refugees. Ukraine is a forty million country. Mm -hmm. The estimate is seven million uh, refugees. It's assuming that the country even exists, because I don't know what's inside his head. He can he can use the he can use the 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 most horrible thing that he has if he sees that he cannot get what he wants. That's what I'm most actually terrified of i mean the that make bomb by me and then that would be all over yes so uh please donate thank you so so everyone who's donating who's who's giving uh, even a small effort people wearing ukrainian flags uh, on their games i've seen sam shankland he he was wearing he didn't some uh, he's gonna play uh Grishchuk and uh, um andrekin i think in the grand prix 
Both of them, by the way, condemned that thing. Nevertheless, they are Russians, and he wanted to wear Ukrainian uh, wear to the game. And the best he found was the Nike, like with the yellow and blue, which is our flag. So everybody's doing a little effort, but there are millions of people like that. So I really appreciate that. Every time I see how much help we get, I, I want to cry and, and thank you. I cannot thank you enough. Yeah, no, I mean, it, the, the whole world is with you, Michaela, and, and the whole world can't agree on anything generally. So everyone is mm -hmm. like with Ukraine, which is honestly, uh, honestly amazing. Um, thanks so much for joining and, and for sharing uh, your story. I mean, I, I think I think everyone in the chat is crying now. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, really, thank you for coming on. Uh, thank best you, of luck to thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I can't thank you enough.